Hello everybody, it's Spore Guy here with a, a rocket launch yet again. Now you saw from the title, this is a recreation of, well, it's not, it hasn't actually happened yet, the uh, Bepi Colombo, um, the Bepi Colombo uh, Venus uh, mission. Well, we're, or not, sorry, Mercury mission. I can't believe I got that wrong. I apologize. And uh, yes, this rocket here is a recreation of the Ariane f uh, Ariane 5 rocket, I think. Yep, Ariane 5. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And uh, I think I did a good job. I had to use one mod here, which was procedural fairings, to make sure it was, you know, it, it looked okay because it, w it wouldn't have looked properly otherwise. It wouldn't have looked very good otherwise. So the Bepi Colombo spacecraft is a. Uh, yeah, sorry for the booster separation there. It's a bit dizzying. Anyway, the Bepi Colombo mission is. As you saw from the start, the logo is a joint mission between um, the European Space Agency, ESA, and the Jap uh, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA, which is quite a cool name. And they're going to it's going to Mercury. So, um, what I've done is I've uh, put together this launch vehicle and the actual spacecraft from stock parts, except for procedural fairings. Um, the actual spacecraft has a couple of those on it to make it look decent. I didn't use no clip. It kind of looks like I used no clip, but I didn't. It just works like that. Anyway. So yeah, this spacecraft's going to Mercury, and uh, we're going to see what it looks like shortly. So this is the separation here of the stages. Oh yeah, I used curb cam, uh, the curb cam mod for this. And uh, yeah, here we go. So separating here, this did lovely. Separating away, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, right. So it's named after um, Giuseppe, uh, Giuseppe Colombo, uh, who was a scientist, mathematician, and engineer at um, the University of Padua, Italy. And he was the first person to implement the uh, the gravity assist maneuver. So during the Mariner 10 mission, so it's used for all interplan it's used for most interplanetary probes now. So it's named after him. And yeah, you can see. Sorry, I missed it. The fairing uh, went off there. So this is Beppe Colombo. It's the best I could do to recreate what it looks like. I think a quick Google search will uh, show you that it's similar looking to this. It's not as big, I don't think. Um, it might be a bit smaller than the actual Bepi Colombo. But we are off to Moho instead of Mercury because, again, this is Kerbal Space Program, so the closest analog we have to Mercury is, of course, Moho. So, off we go to Moho. And I'll read you more. I'll tell. I'm not reading. I'm not reading anything. I'll tell you more about the uh, Bepi Colombo mission. Now it, its components are, it's got three components. It has the Mercury Transfer Module, which you will see shortly. I actually, I won't talk about it yet because I haven't shown most of it. So what I'm showing here is the transfer to Mercury. Now I think the, the actual spacecraft would um, would actually use its, it, it uses ion engines. The actual spacecraft uses ion engines, so I use the Kerbal Space Program ones here. And uh, I don't think it would have used that chemical rocket there for <laughs> the transfer, but I, uh, I don't know, I thought I would because I can't get it perfect, obviously. So off we go away from Kerbin. Oh my god, I love Kerbin. It's lovely. The blue marble in the sky. Green marble. Oh, that would be jewel. Anyway, off we go. This, this satellite dish isn't that big either. I just, um, I don't know, wanted to make it look a bit bigger. But yeah, this is off to Mercury. It's a lovely joint. Uh, expedition. Now I haven't done this perfectly. This the actual mission would require a lot of gravity assists. Like, okay, first I'll tell you the gravity assists. It's crazy. So it launches, and then two years later it flies by Earth for a gravity assist. Then it flies by Venus next year, the year after, and then a year later it flies by Venus again. Then in the same year it flies by Mercury, and then it flies by Mercury again and again. <laughs> In a, in a period of two years, and then it flies by Mercury again and again, five times it flies by Mercury, and at that point, it, and then after that, it, on the 1st of January 2024, it gets into Mercury orbit. Now, the reason for this is because Mercury is kind of difficult to get into orbit around, and it needs quite a few uh, slowing down, s slowing down things to actually get into orbit around Mercury, is how I understand it. So I did this mission because it's kind of obscure and not many people know about it. Well, I assume a lot of people don't, but I'm not sure. Maybe maybe it's really well known. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Um, feel free to voice 
your opinions in the comments. Anyway, or your, not your opinions, but your uh, knowledge on this. So yes, it uh, detached there, and we're using the ion engines to complete these drives. So here we go, power up, yep. The actual spacecraft has three of these ion engines. And uh, yeah, <laughs> obviously Kerbal Space Program ones are nothing like the real ones. The real ones take years, years of burning to complete their um, their uh, their burns. So, yes, we're heading in towards Moho here. I'm pretty proud of this. I got a pretty good Moho encounter. But again, Moho is quite difficult to get into an orbit around. You need quite a lot of delta V, just like the real Mercury. <laughs> it's quite difficult. It's on this inclined elliptical orbit, really close to the sun. So it's quite difficult again. So yes, it is. So the vehicle itself has multiple parts. As we get close here to Mercury or to Moho, <laughs> we will we will have a look at them. But uh, we're approaching here now. Let's see where is it? Aha! Uh -huh. so the propulsion module at the back is the Mercury transfer module, which I will be dumping. Um, yes. There you go, it's jettisoned then after it's finished. The thing on top of that, um, the little box thing on top of the transfer module is the Mercury Planetary Orbiter, or MPO, and that um, <laughs> it has a radiator and what it's there for is it's there for quite a diff quite a few things. And uh yep, yeah, load of gamma ray spectrometers and X ray spectrometers and radio science experiments and God knows all sorts of stuff on it. And inside that little fairing there, I'm not sure if you can see it, is the tiny little octagonal little thing called the Mercury Magnospheric Orbiter. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It, uh, it analyzes Mercury's magnosphere using uh, quite a few um, instruments. A lot of instruments. And the mission it was supposed to have a Mercury surface element, which was basically this tiny little, tiny, tiny lander. Uh, it was 0.9 meter disc. A diameter disk and it was supposed to land on Mercury. I haven't included it here because it isn't in the actual mission and because I I actually um, I don't know I couldn't I couldn't think of a way to make a spacecraft that small in Kerbal Space Program um, that would actually we go fly around Mercury a couple of times so basically we're gonna we might lower this orbit but what we're gonna do is we're gonna deposit the Mercury planetary orbiter in this huge long orbit so we're gonna detach no, sorry, we're going to um, the the Mercury Magnospheric Orbiter from that little fairing. There it goes into this very big elliptical orbit. So we'll spin it around and we'll, we'll um, open up its, uh, its booms. So, that, there we go. Isn't it lovely? And that's going to stay there. All pretty. So now, switch to the the main fella and move him around. Yep. And so we're gonna bring this fella into a lower orbit um, because it's not it's not measuring the magnosphere. So it can in fact be in a lower orbit. Um, just in order to actually measure it. So so yes, it's going to to measure. Yes. Yeah, so we've deposited the the tiny lander there is always quite important. So yes, the other one's going to go into a very close orbit around Moho. I nearly said Mercury, but I didn't. Haha, uh -huh, good for me. So it's going to be on. Yes, this is. Yeah, I told. Yeah, it's a joint mission between Nisa and JAXA. So I think I'm pronouncing it right. I'm sorry about the pronunciations. I'm <laughs> not the best at all the pronunciations. Um, off we go. So we are now going to deposit the. Mercury Planetary Orbiter, I think. Yes, the Mercury Planetary Orbiter. There we go. Off it goes. Now, I've included a little engine on it. I don't think it actually had an engine. <laughs> but I thought that it needed one. I wanted to put something on it, so I stuck an engine on it. So there we go. It's being... It's drifting away there. Perfect. Away from the... Away from the Mercury Transfer Module. Or Moho Transfer Module. A Mercury. But it doesn't matter, because they're both begin with M, so... So what we're going to do with this fella is we're going to deorbit him, which I, they don't actually do that in the real mission. It's just I really wanted to see something explode. So I'm surprised uh, this thing has a huge amount of delta v. Like this could go to any planet, and it's really stable as well. I put a reaction wheel inside that little thing there, and it seems to be working really well. So this isn't just 
uh, a good recreation. It's an actual working probe. Uh, it doesn't have any science equipment on it, but you could stick some science equipment on it. I'm only doing this in sandbox mode, so but it is a working probe. And that bit there, I think, looked quite cool. <laughs> but uh, down we go. Going to crash. <laughs> I guess it has a mercury surface element after all, or a moho surface element even. So off we go. Down, 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 down. Oh yeah, I'd like to t take the time as well to thank you for watching this uh, this recreation of the uh, Bepi Colombo mission to Mercury that I have done. It hasn't, of course, of course the mission hasn't been done yet, but uh, there we go. It's going to be done in 2016. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you do a bit more research on this. And uh, yep, Spore Guy 64 here. Bye.